trucks, antique construction equipment. It's called the shovel. Uh, motorcycles, tractors, planes, military equipment. More of its kind. It's the biggest thing in the world, right? You want to go to the piston-powered autorama? If a piston makes it go, it's in the show. They should say that. Pistonpower.com are the details. Uh, a four-pack of tickets. Bring three pals. Car 10, good luck. 216-578-1007. Or 800-348-1007. Another ringing endorsement. You're an idiot. Your show sucks. And you've proven that many times. For the Alan Cox Show. You're so stupid. On 100.7 WMMS. You might recall some 30 years ago, almost, 1996. You know, when a show is on as long as The Simpsons has been on, they're going to get a few things right. And as the show stays on longer and time keeps moving in the same direction, you know, you'll see things a lot, pretty frequently. Oh, The Simpsons predicted it. It would have been in season six or seven, I think, mid-90s. Uh, they did a, a thing on Homer. You remember Homer Palooza? Yeah. He's so, trying to reconnect uh, <laughs> connect with his kids through music, and he gets hired as a stunt performer at the freak show. That's right. And uh, what do they call the? Well, it was I, I don't remember. It was making fun of Lollapalooza. Yeah, I, I, not Lollapalooza, but that was South Park, I think. But it was um, Hollapalooza. Hollapalooza, right? Yeah. And um, they used to have the Jim Rose Circus in the mm-hmm. earlier days of Lollapalooza, and so it was kind of take off on that. Um, but part of Homer Palooza was they did a gag where the London Symphony Orchestra shows up and wants to know who ordered them, <laughs> and it turns out to be Cypress Hill. No, 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 no. It, uh, they the, the whole bit is somebody ordered the London Orchestra, possibly. Well, hi, <laughs> Cypress Hill. I'm looking your direction. Yeah, and they, like, get together, and they're like, did we order an orchestra? I don't know if we ordered an orchestra. They're like, yeah, we did. And then later, Peter Frampton's throwing a fit. He's like, Pink Floyd steals my balloon. <laughs> oh, I see. And uh, Cypress, Cypress Hill, Hill steals my orchestra. Stole the London and, Symphony yeah. Orchestra, right. Oh, bands. Who is playing with the London Symphony Orchestra? Come on, people. Somebody order the London Symphony Orchestra. Possibly while high. <laughs> Cypress Hill, I'm looking in your direction. Hey, man, did we order an orchestra? What's up with this orchestra, man? Where'd the orchestra come from? I, I don't know, man. I didn't tell me about this, man. Just, this, man. Just, we got to do, do something. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, we think we did. Uh, do you know Insane in the Brain? We mostly know classical, but we could give it a shot. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. And then uh, Marge goes, now this I like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, that's becoming a real thing. Cypress that's Hill awesome. has announced that they are going that. to perform with the London Symphony Orchestra. Uh, if you follow them on uh, on uh, Instagram, you might have seen it. Nearly 30 years after the Homer Palooza episode, uh, they will play at the Royal Albert Hall That's so this year. Isn't that wild? That's great. It's also wild that... The 1990s was 30 years ago. Yeah. That was a little painful to hear. Yeah, we we land on that all the time. It's like, oof. Um, They did a show with the San Diego Symphony Orchestra last year, and so they're going over and doing it with the London Symphony Orchestra, and um, people are very excited. But it was initially a goof on The Simpsons. And I think they're doing Sonic Temple, too. I mean, maybe you don't care about the London Symphony Orchestra, but they are playing Sonic Temple. But they said that the um, uh, the gig was obviously inspired by The Simpsons. I'm trying to find out when that is. You know, there are people who probably want to go over there and see this. I wonder if the writers of The Simpsons get any... Kickback for that? Comp- Kick compensation back, yeah. for this. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I don't know. I'm this. curious if Conan had his fingerprints on that. You know, that was. I think that was in the Conan era. 
But, uh, yeah, they are going to uh, perform there in London on um, July 10th. There you go. Royal Albert Hall, which, by the way, has uh, hosted. Uh, it's a very prominent uh, uh, venue there. A lot different than Prince Albert Hall. <laughs> yes. That's the one that's got the mm-hmm. giant piercing in the doorway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so July 10th. That's exciting. If you're, I mean, maybe you're a London Symphony Orchestra season ticket holder. What do they call it? <laughs> Bill's our patron of the arts. When you go to Severance Hall, are they called season ticket holders? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you're a season ticket holder of the London Symphony Orchestra. And you go, Mildred, who will we be seeing? Jay Cypress Hill. Ah, they don't know what that is. Mildred, but. would you pass the J? Pass uh, <laughs> hits from the bong. <laughs> Pass the duchy on the left-hand side. Pass, please. Yeah. So that's exciting for them. God, I went to see that Ghostbusters movie and the... Yeah? Oh, how was it? It's just... It is really terrible. That's my, Dang, I was gonna my ex-wife my said it was really good. Oh, she said she really oh. liked it, but... Well, we took the little one. We're like, hey, want to go see Ghostbusters? She's like, yeah, okay. I mean, she's not, you know... Anyway, first off, and I know we've said this again, they, they really, really have got to stop with the 30 minutes of commercials and promos and i mean the mo- uh, before the movie the starts previous, oh my yeah. god i just don't i just get there 30 minutes late oh, like i just previews why is that a big deal i kind of like it's a half an hour i've it's got an 8 year old like no it has not always been like that it has gotten incrementally more it's been like this for a while but i thought well maybe you you always hope it won't be that long no right? i i always get there 15, 20 minutes late just because I don't want to sit through all that I anymore. just didn't know what... your seat's reserved now. Yes. It's, it's, there's no point of getting there that early. Well, you I can al- see all the trailers online. I always think that, but then I don't know what the line's going to be. So I'm like, I don't want to be standing waiting for popcorn for 30 minutes. And mm-hmm. then, So anyway, so uh, I, I'm sure there's a happy medium there. So anyway, so we you go... You can also do, like, order ahead at a lot of places, too. Can so you? you just pick up your food when you get there. Yeah. So it wasn't good, though. Well, we go to the noon movie. The thing starts at like 12.32, and it's like a mm. just shy of a two-hour movie. It's so like my daughter, like 45 minutes in, she's like, how much is left in this? <laughs> I go, you know, because like it's it's almost two hours long, and really nothing happens for the first 90 minutes. I just don't know who it's for. You know, when they brought Ghostbusters back this last time, it was obviously a huge nostalgia play. Right. They were keeping a lot of it under wraps. You knew that Paul Rudd was in it. You knew there were a couple of kids. There's a Stranger Things kid in there. And then there had been rumblings that, like, the OG guys are going to be in it. And then little, you know, Harold Ramis passed away, and so he obviously wasn't going to be in it, but they found a way to get him in there. And But this one, I don't know who is supposed to, I don't know what it's for or who it's for or it just feels so unbelievably cynical, this movie. Like, it doesn't really do anything, but they keep making inside jokes. And, like, Ernie Hudson's in it, but he's a rich guy now. And this girl who's supposed to be, like, the main character. She was in the last one. She's Spengler's granddaughter, and she's a genius. She's, the, I mean, she's fine, but she's, like, the character is this just sullen girl walking around for two hours. I just, I was, I think my daughter liked it. I don't know, you know. It was entertaining enough for her, I guess. But I was just like, oh, my God. And I guess it did really well because, again, people are nostalgic for this. But I'm like, but who is nostalgic for this? Because they kind of took care of that with the last one. And this one, when you trot them out, the plot's weird. Like, Kumail Nanjani's in it, but you don't know why. He's just a guy who shows up, and then he's the thing. And I'm like, oh, my God. So I guess people are liking it, but I couldn't wait to get out of there. I know. I was going to take my nephews to go see it. They're on, they, you know, they're they on might spring love breaks. It. Yeah, so. But you might claw might... your your eyes out of your head. I, don't I know, know. I've only had one friend go see it, and they said, it, it's not terrible, but it left me with no excitement, so I don't know how to feel about it. It's like just shy of everything it should be. Yeah. The, the action's not enough. The jokes are definitely not enough. It's not particularly scary. It's just, I, I don't know. I don't know who it's for. And it's like two hours long. That's a long movie. Uh, I mean, I mean, that to me is kind of baked into the cake now. Like, a lot of movies are two hours now. Every movie is too long. Plus the previous. Plus mm-hmm. the previous. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I was just like, I walked out of there like, oh, my God. I can't even tell you the last time I went to a movie theater. The only thing I thought was, I hope they're done now. 
I hope that's it. You know that's not the case. I don't know how, but that's my. If it does well, I guess. But that's my point. Like, how many more can you make? Like, it was it was a novelty last time. Because they're like, okay, it's a generational thing. They're gonna, you're gonna see some of the old guys, and that's gonna take care of the Gen Xers, right? Like me, but this one. Okay, well, so it did. Listen, 40, I love that forty-five million. But I know it was the, like the number one movie. I think right, but that's also the number one movie. Means next to nothing anymore because. Forty-five million. What was the budget? Probably two hundred million, right? Maybe a hundred million. Well, I, but so, for for first weekend, I think they were pretty happy with this. Yeah. Well, and that's all people that just want to go see it. That's right. not saying that they liked it. It's just more of like, oh, a new Ghostbusters movie's out. Let's all go. Yeah, these people paid their money, and that's what I thought. Yeah. I was like, okay, I, you know, I'm like the plot, from what I understand, looks flimsy, but maybe it'll be fun, and you know, and it's got a couple of moments, but I was just like, okay, I hope they're done. I hope this is done. <laughs> You know, it's not even Jason Reitman directed him anymore. So I think he, like, you know, I laughed when they showed the writing credits. I was like, hey, they did have writers. I would have never guessed <laughs> in a hundred years. Hullabalooza. Well, no, yeah, but I think the episode was called Homer Palooza, wasn't it? Right, but the, yeah. the event was called Hullab- Hullabalooza. Yeah, so I just thought it was really slow, and they, they like, broke the characters off into scenes it was really weird. It was like they compartmentalized groups of characters into their own scenes. See, but that's pe- that's a thing that they try to do now where when you have an ensemble cast. So you get things like that in the Avengers finale. You get that like, like Endgame and uh, Infinity War. Uh, what's it called? Did that a lot. What's the Guardians of the Galaxy does that? Mm. So it's a way to go. Okay, we can make sure we get everybody some screen time uh, by breaking everybody up into groups and let them all go off on their own. I guess it just but, felt really weird. It was just like there'd be like really shoehorning some nostalgia in in weird places, and I don't know. I, I was so the budget was a hundred million. Okay, and so they made. 75 million globally oh, yeah. so far. They'll easily so. make their money back. I mean, I'm sure it's a hit. I just but, don't but know the, who it's for. They have for. to make double their money to really I know. do it because. I think they yeah. make 200 million on this. They could. You know? But the box office, too, is one of those things where by week two, everybody that saw it is going to see it. Like, the, there's not a lot of movies that are going to come even close to their first weekend. Hmm. Well, anyway. I'm giving it again. If you got kids, they may love it, you know. But even for kids, I'm like, if it's a kid, they don't. I mean, maybe their first movie was the last Ghostbusters movie, yeah. so they don't know who the old guys are. Right. They don't care. The people who do remember the old guys, it was fun to see them last time, but we don't care anymore. And I don't know. Well, it sounds like your a- daughter wasn't that into it. She's asking how much longer is this movie. And I'm kind of trying to soft shoe it too. I'm like, oh, I think it's like maybe it's like, yeah, you know, yeah. Minutes, no, and it's not like she was complaining. She wasn't all shifty in her seat or anything. She was. I was like, it's a little slow, isn't it? She's like, yeah, it's a little slow. Yeah. I was like, geez, it was like 90 minutes in when like a big thing happens. Right. Yeah. Those oh, are the worst. Holy cow. That said, I still look forward to going and sitting in a theater for four hours to watch the new Dune, which I haven't yet seen. I've seen Dune. I Dune know. Good. I keep meaning to. I just haven't had the opportunity to do it yet. I enjoy Dune, and I'm very excited for... I really want to see Late Night with the Devil. I heard that's very good. Late Night with the Devil. And I want to see Is that Civil a scary War. movie? Yeah. 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 No, Late Night with the Devil is a kid's movie. Oh. And again, for it's me... It's a dirt devil. It's about cleaning. For... <laughs> Uh, the mom, the mom in uh, Ghostbusters is Carrie Coon, who's from Copley, Ohio. Right? She's uh, yeah. she was in the last one. She's Paul Rudd's girlfriend in this. I think she's super foxy. They give her like a mom haircut, but I think she's super foxy. I think she's great in everything. So that's who all uh, all I cared looking at. But yeah, it was just really weird. Because remember how they had to drag Bill Murray kicking and screaming into that last one? Yeah, he was like, I don't care. I don't want to do it. And then every, I think you know. Uh, kind of a movement started to build, unless he was being coy and didn't want people to know that he was actually in it. But he was playing it off like he didn't see the point of it. And this one, like, everybody's back. So clearly they were twisted arms, mm-hmm. you know. But I don't know. Maybe your kids will love it. 
but who knows? I like this little movie review segment. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm the wrong guy for it, you know, because I don't go as often as I would like. Um, but, and and again, I've heard, you know, I, I didn't hear people grumbling in the theater. It sounded like people were having a good time. Like I said, my ex-wife said she saw it and she loved it. The people so. next to me or a few seats away from me, they just, I thought they left because they were gone for so long in this movie. I thought they got up and left. But I'm like, I wonder if people do that anymore. Do people walk out of the theater anymore? Well, if they did, they probably went to another movie. They already paid. You may as well just skip over to another movie. Oh, you movie think that's that what out. they're doing? Yeah. Oh. It was an older couple. Too, that yeah. is tricky. Oh. Yeah, as they come in and just they look. people and have uh, reserved well, seats. Reserved seats, yeah. Oh, yeah. forgot they do that now. But also, no, not many people are going to the theater anyway, so you can usually find some empty ones. You know, and so we're sitting there because we're like, okay, maybe there's a mid credit scene. You wrap this whole facocta thing up, right? And they have like a little one, but it doesn't set anything up. So I'm like, okay, just I hope they're done. I, I just I just <laughs> hope they're done. <laughs> just be done. Uh, Did you guys see that there's um a Happy Gilmore two coming out? No, I think that's fake. You think it's fake news? Yeah, oh, okay, okay, that's good. I was really sad about it. I'm like, no, you they can't mess with one of these classic movies. I mean, Carl Weather. Well, they do all the time. I know. Yeah. I but- mean, you know, I was reading a thing where the guy was like, look, Ghostbusters was never good. They just got really lucky with the first one. But they all <laughs> stunk after that. So I'm like, well. They just keep trying know, to make it happen. I guess. And if you have that. But, you know, there's some movies you watch. And, and I think audiences now are a lot hipper to how things work. And they're a little bit more savvy. And so in your head you go. This was just made because they owned the franchise, right? Yeah. Like the production company in the credits is called Ghost Core. So they have a whole production company. I don't know if it's I if it's Jason Reitman's or what. Uh, he kind of grabbed that mantle from his dad, but they have a whole production company set up that's, you're like, don't tell me you're just going to keep cranking these movies out because, I mean, it's diminishing returns is being uh, diplomatic. What, Cody? That's how I felt with Jeepers Creepers because Jeepers Creepers is my favorite scary movie. I can always go to it when I want to. And then there's Jeepers Creepers 2, which is okay. It's not better than the first one, but it was okay. But then they made a Jeepers Creepers 3, and I didn't even know they had a Jeepers Creepers 3 until I, I saw it online. I think it was on Amazon or Max or something like that. And it was direct to, like directly to TV, and it was literally had nothing to do, completely different plot line, but they used the same creeper and the same name as Jeepers Creepers like just to add to the franchise. I was like, this is ridiculous. Well, you know they made a fourth one. They made a fourth? Yeah, they rebooted it. No, I didn't know that. It's called Jeepers Creepers Reborn. It's only They made it a couple years ago. Oh, yeah, that's right, 2022. Yeah. Ugh. No, I bet you I bet you it's awful because it was just stupid. Well, I don't know. You know, by the time they get so many movies in where the credit says, based on characters created by, you're like, oh, my God, the, any, there's no one original uh, associated with this anymore. They died a long time ago or, you know, based off the Mattel toy. I still haven't seen Barbie. You see Barbie? You, yes, you haven't seen that yet? No, and Why I have not? an eight-year-old girl because she doesn't, hadn't shown any interest in it. And I'm I not going like to watch it more, by myself. I, I feel mean, like it's more an adult movie, actually. Yeah, yeah. I would say. It that, might be, yeah. but I'm not going to. I mean. No, I think you'd like it. Why don't you and your wife oh, should watch it? Oh, do you? Yeah. I think you and your wife should watch it together. <laughs> Alan, I think you'd really like Barbie. You like busty blondes. <laughs> What's that? I said, you like busty blondes. Margot Robbie, she's a babe. She didn't do it for me. Really? I fully understand why everybody creams their jeans, but she's not like, she wouldn't be the one to jump out of my, you know. She She makes a great Barbie. I oh, was sad for great. her that she didn't get nominated for anything, and yeah. Ryan Gosling did. All right, I looked up the uh, Happy Gilmore 2 thing. Fake news. Christopher, no, no. Christopher McDonald, who played Shooter McGavin, said that Sandler sh- said there's a script, and that's about all there is so far. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's a first draft. And Carl script, Weathers is yeah. gone. Carl Weathers is gone. Because, like, I saw somebody post, like, a casting list, and it was, like, Tiger Woods playing Carl Weathers Jr., or, like, a – Whatever his character's name was. What was his character's name? I can't remember. Chubbs? Yeah, Chubbs. Chubbs, Chubbs Jr. Go. Yeah, good job. And I'm like, well, he's not an actor. He doesn't know how to act. They're not going to just put, well, an Adam Sandler movie they might, but I don't know. I I would like to see more before everybody gets their hopes up. Well, also, did, did I'd Bob rather Barker they didn't do too? it. Yeah, Bob Barker's dead. I, I, don't, I just don't think we need that movie. Well, I love Happy Gilmore, and I feel like it will, yeah, yeah. It will ruin it if we tried to. Yeah. Comedy sequels are redo never it. that good. I know. 
Let it be the original. And that's, that was like when Adam Sandler first got started, too. Yeah. Happy Gilmore, Just, Billy Madison. Those mm-hmm. are classics. Let's not touch them. Hmm. Okay. Hot take. You think I'll take so? from Bridget. Yeah, listen to that. I mean, why not? <laughs> yeah. What's her other she, hot take, Alan? Oh, that uh, Taylor Swift fans are uh, visually <laughs> unpleasant. And um, you're not you're just adding things to it. Now we're just gonna keep well, that's his way of that's his Alan way of saying fat and ugly. I don't want to say fat and ugly. I think that that's uh, you're not saying. I think that, it's you're not saying that you're it, quoting. You're quoting Bridget. So don't talk uh, about her opinion yeah. that Bridget Linton yeah. thinks that uh, Taylor Swift makes music for fat and ugly girls. You guys, lies, lies, lies. Ah, uh, the boy. Uh, oh, I got a break. Uh, look at that. Okay. Yeah, and not a minute too soon. Uh, you want to send me a text, 35192, alancoxshow.com. You can watch uh, Bridget underscore Linton 8. 